Hello, this is Big Burn from the Drift Hook Fly Fishing System. In this series of videos, we're going to take a deep dive into the system itself. We're going to talk about everything from what's inside the box to different techniques to use with these flies and anything that can help you land a monster trout. If you're new to fly fishing, please go back to our beginner courses where we have led you step by step from gear to casting to catching your first fish. If you have fly fished before and you're ready to work the magic of the Drift Hook system, then let's continue. The Drift Hook fly fishing system is built on the idea that the number of aquatic insects at any given time can determine the successful outcome of your fly fishing trip. In this lesson, we're going to go over the breakdown of our fly boxes and our season charts. This will give you the optimal success on the water at any given time. We'll be learning two main things in this lesson. What are the fish feeding on during any given day of the year? And what pattern will be most successful for that feeding? Most reports or classes on the subject can be overly complicated and almost impossible to follow. What I want you to master are the seven major groups of trout food and how the Drift Hook Fly Fishing System utilizes these food sources to increase your chances at landing monster trout. In the Drift Hook Fly Fishing System, we focus on seven major groups of food that are most successful at catching monster trout. Well, number one, midges. Number two, mayflies. Number three, caddis. Number four, stoneflies. Number five, worms and eggs. Number six, terrestrials and hoppers and seven streamers. You'll notice on your Drift Hook fly fishing system box that there is more of number one through four than any other sets of flies in the arsenal. The reason behind this is that trout consume these particular insects four times more than the others throughout the year. Before we dive into the details of each one of these groups, I want to give you a clear overview of the life cycle of each fly. Smaller insects that can become airborne go through four stages of their life cycle. The nymph, this is when they come out of their egg and are still growing. They typically cling to the bottom of the river until the current sweeps them away from their home. Number two is the emerger. This is when they start to come out of the water and get ready to fly and mate. Number three is the adult or dry. This is when they reach adulthood and have the ability to fly around searching for food or an appropriate mate to continue their life cycle. Number four is the spinner. This is when they have mated and passed on and are floating on the water. Stoneflies go through the same life cycle, but the patterns that represent these cycles are typically limited to the nymph stage and adult stage. The emerger stage of the stonefly happens above the surface where they let the sun airdrop their wings before flying. Terrestrials. We only mimic adult patterns because most are born on land and typically only make it to the water for fish during the adult stage. Our streamer package is not on the same cycle because these patterns represent small fish, leeches, and sculpins, but we'll go into detail on these in later sessions. Here we'll see the seasonal breakdown of each group and its life cycle throughout the year. This is one of the most important tools a fly fisherman can keep on them while they hit the water. You can download or print this document on our free download section in the members portal, top right hand corner. Can't miss it. When developing our system, we first answered the question that was most obvious, at least to us. Where do trout spend the majority of their lives? You guessed it, in the water. So the first set of flies that we provide in our system are nymph flies. These flies will catch the majority of your fish on any given day. As you can see from the chart, we have systematically built out our boxes to load you from top to bottom and front to back with the most abundant food sources that the trout will be searching for on any given month of the year. By following our chart and setting up your rig to match, you have a significant advantage when you hit the water. We'll go into further details on the setups and further lessons, but I want you to get comfortable with the chart of the Drift Hook Fly Fishing System and the boxes. If you bought the introductory package, you received the Drift Hook Nymph Frenzy box. If we start with this box, on the top we have midges. Throughout the year, midges are an abundant and widely found source on, in any given trout environment. They're found in tailwaters, freestones, lakes, streams, your local convenience store mud puddle. They hatch year-round, and trout are like ramen noodles to a college student. As you go down the box, you'll see that it correlates with the hatch chart. Midge, mayfly, eggs, worms, caddis, caddis mayfly, mayfly, stonefly, stonefly. If you look back at our charts, the second most abundant source of food is the mayfly. The mayfly is one of the most diverse insects in the fly fishing world. They vary in color and size and can be found all over the place. If it weren't for mayflies, choosing the correct fly to coincide with the hatch would be relatively easy, but the diversity in the species is why there are over 6,000 fly patterns on the market today. At Drift Hook, we provide you with the most successful patterns on the market. When used according to our suggestions, these patterns are deadly and can land you at abundant trout. The next group of flies that we've provided are in the caddis group. Caddis are abundant when they have clean water source. So most likely, if you find caddis, you're guaranteed to find trout. The easiest way to find a caddis is when you get close to your water source, flip over a rock. It's going to be covered with caddis casings. The great thing about caddis is that when they hatch, it can be one of the most amazing hatches that you're going to see on the water. It'll remind you of the Ten Commandments movie as they make their way around the river. But wait, you say, why is there caddis mayfly, mayfly stonefly? That's kind of a great question. 
The reason is because these patterns imitate both groups. Sounds ridiculous, but at the same time, these patterns can be the most successful because they do just that. They imitate both a caddis and a mayfly, or a mayfly and a stonefly. It's like a bacon cheeseburger wrapped in pizza, irresistible. Stoneflies are a very important food source for trout, but at the same time, these insects need the most pristine living conditions. The slightest bit of pollution, and you're not gonna find these species. The best areas to use them are environments that are as far away from civilization as possible. As previously stated, the stonefly comes in nymph and dry fly patterns only. The reason for this is because, unlike other species, they crawl up on rocks to shed their casings. One of the most amazing hatches that you can catch is the stonefly hatch, also known as the salmonfly hatch. If you're fortunate to be on the upper Colorado River when this hatch takes place, which is only about one or two weeks out of the year, the fish go nuts. Um, they're stocking up on large amounts of protein, and you can't release a fish fast enough to get your fly back on the water before you catch another. The last food source that we have in the nymph frenzy box is going to be your worms and egg patterns. These patterns are more seasonal, but are a staple in any fly fishing box. When trout spawn during the spring and the fall, March through May for rainbows and October through December for browns, egg patterns can be deadly. And when the water is murky or the temps are not right for fly movement, then a worm pattern can be successful as well. Worms can be used year-round, but they're most successful during the summer months and early spring when you have runoff. Anytime that rain is pushing mud into the water is a good time to use a worm. I once had a trip during runoff season where I knew I had little chance of success because of the high water. Luckily, I was able to find a little bit of clear water along the banks where I nymphed the San Juan worm and had an amazing day. Because of all the sediment in the water, it also pushes out annelids or worms into the flow and can be extremely successful. If you purchase the second box in our drift hook fly fishing system, the Emerger Swing fly box, you're fortunate enough to have in your arsenal the Emerger adult and spinner stages of this same group. The only difference is this setup is that we've been utilizing this box for both nymphing and dry fly fishing. An emerger pattern can be successful both underwater and above water. The adult patterns are great alone or in tandem with our hopper dropper set. In later lessons, we're going to go into detail of these combos to double and triple your success on the water.